good morning and welcome to the Mad Pause Q3 FY21 Investor Webinar. My name is Jane Morgan and I am the Investor and Media Relations Manager for Pet Services Marketplace Company Mad Pause. Today we'll be running through an investor presentation which has been lodged on the ASX, followed by a Q&A session. To ask a question throughout the presentation, please use the chat function at the bottom of the screen. To run you through today's presentation, I will now introduce you to our co-founder and CEO, Justus Hammer. Hang on. Hey everybody, thanks for that. I'm going to share my screen. Perfect. So welcome everybody. Um, thanks for taking the time to um, listen to the update. Um, kind of very exciting plan for us. We've obviously finalized the IPO uh, just about a month ago and, um, and already kind of to execute on the, on the strategy of the company. Um, maybe just a quick update on kind of what we're doing just in case um, people haven't heard the story yet. Um, like Jane said, we're a pet services marketplace um, focusing on Australia at the moment, um, but we've been in the market for just about six years and we really kind of focus on um, making sure that we make pet ownership easier for pet owners in Australia. Um, we've been around now for to um, for close to close to six years, um, and um, you know the whole team that started the company has always been involved in marketplaces. I've been one of the early um, advisors and investors in Airtasker, and we realized, you know, back six years ago that there's a huge opportunity to build a marketplace in the pet space, and we knew that if we build a successful marketplace in the pet space, it would give us a very um, defensible market um, business model. Uh, that would be very hard to um, be overtaken by any new incumbents or competitors. And so for the first couple of years, we really focused on what you see here on the left hand side, uh, which is our pet care product. So this is really a marketplace that brings together pet sitters and pet owners. So if you've got a pet and you're looking for somebody to look after the pet uh, when you go on holiday or when you have to go back to work now um, and you need somebody to uh, look after them during the day, you will find a local sitter in your area. Um, and uh, the main services that we, that, that we offer here are pet sitting, which is holiday services, overnight stays, daycare, dog walking, um, and uh, then our subscription weekly services, which are really kind of recurring services like daycare or dog walking. And we make it as easy as possible on the platform where you can just set and forget a booking and a dog walker will come every Wednesday and, and Friday to pick up your dog and walk the dog. So that's kind of how we how we started the company. And over the last couple of years, we've built a um, huge database in terms of pet owners. Uh, we've got over 500,000 pet owners on the database now. We've had over um, 95,000 paid um, customers now on the platform. And so at the beginning of last year, as you can imagine, being quite closely related to travel services, we had a bit of a dip first in, um, when, when the lockdowns happened in, happened in Australia, but um, we, we then saw kind of the, the silver lining, which was pet ownership obviously going through the roof over the last uh, couple of months. I'm sure most of you would know somebody or maybe you, you, you yourself have gotten a pet over the last couple of months, um, but data from the US suggests that uh, pet ownership in the US has, has grown by about 20 um, or 25% over the last 12 months. And we expect very, very similar numbers. And um, once we have official numbers here in Australia to see that, um, to see the same trend here in Australia. But um, what we've done in that time where, um, you know, travel was down, we've, we've uh, kind of really started executing on the second part of our strategy, which was always around building a pet ecosystem, uh, an ecosystem of pet services and products and use the assets that we've built around pet ownership um, to provide other services and products to the customers that we already have in our network. And the first thing we've done there um, was to launch pet food. Uh, we've launched a service called um, pet, uh, Dinner Bowl. So if you go to uh, dinnerbowl.com.au, you will find a raw food subscription service that delivers pet food, raw pet food straight to your door. Um, you know, whenever your dog needs it, the exact uh, amount of food that your dog needs. Um, and it's human grade, high, high quality food. So uh, you, you can rest assured that you feed your dog as good as you feed yourself. Um, and that's really kind of the beginning. We've now actually last week just uh, launched our insurance product as well. So you see that uh, on the slide here to, uh, a little bit further to the right. Um, and, uh, you know, that's the next extension of kind of additional revenue streams on really making sure that we 
we make the best out of the assets that we've built in terms of the customer base um, that we already have. Uh, the extension to that is going to be treats and pet health. So these are these are products that we're looking at um, launching as well. All these ones are kind of based on the premise of um, subscription services. So the platform that we've built now for the billable service is going to be the, the basis of um, rolling out you know, additional services in the subscription space. Um, like I said, you know, treats is something that we're looking at. The next services that are actually lined up um, for launch are kibble. So you know, at the moment, we do raw food only. We're going to add kibble as an option. Um, very high premium quality uh, kibble again without any nasties in it. And um, uh, shortly after, uh, we, will, we will have lightly cooked um, meals um, offering as well. And um, again, we kind of use the same tech platform that we've built for the subscription um, uh, service in Dinnerball to roll out those services. Um, just in terms of the commercials, uh, a quick uh, refresher. So on the marketplace side, it's quite simple. We're taking essentially 27% of any, any money that um, goes through the marketplace, 20% from the sitter and 7% 7, 7 from the pet owner. That is um, you know, probably where the sweet spot is. There might be a little bit um, of change there, but um, we, we wanna make sure that this works for the sitters, obviously, as well as works for us. Um, and um, you know, looking at competitors overseas, 27% seems to be um, the place to be. And then on the right-hand side, like I mentioned, these are subscription services. Um, so to give you an idea, on the dinner bowl service, uh, if one of our, um, on average, we charge um, uh, our customers around 180, Five dollars per month for this service. So if they stay for, with the service for a whole year, um, you know that's lifetime. That's that's a yearly revenue of over two thousand dollars from those customers. So it's a very attractive um, model, uh, and we've worked a lot on kind of making sure that we uh, get the acquisition side of um, things right. And with adding kibble and raw now to the equation, um, it's just going to give us more um, uh, more options for our customers to. Um, to acquire even more customers of our existing existing database. Good. So now um, maybe a quick update on the um, on how we've been trading over the last uh, of months and in Q3. So you know very very positive numbers and we're very excited about these numbers. Um, as you can imagine, we had a record month uh, in terms of bookings. We have thirteen and a half thousand bookings coming through the platform. Um, just in March, which was a record month for you know for the lifetime of, of Mad Pods, which is unusual because normally the, the Q3 is uh, seasonally a, a little bit of a weaker quarter normally for us. Um, as you can imagine, you know with travel kind of peaking throughout the Christmas period, um, there's always a little bit of a dip in terms of bookings in January, February. But then March is kind of when it when we see the first um, uh, increases again. Uh, towards the Easter holidays, but this time it has been a um, significantly stronger, stronger increase than what we've seen in years before. Um, we've also seen, you know, more people coming to our platform, which is also very important to us. Um, you know, if you if you know marketplaces, you will know that um, you know uh, uh, traffic and content content is particularly important to kind of make um, marketplaces work. Uh, we've doubled down on that on that strategy and kind of paid out already. We've had over one million um, sessions on on our platforms, on the different platforms that we have, including our our, our um, Madcos blog, um, and that again gives us more more uh, opportunities, obviously, to put the right products and services in front of our customers at the right time. Um, so for the whole quarter, we had 32,000 um, bookings. Uh, GMV was up 43% uh, year on year. Um, to $3.6 million for, for the quarter, and revenue was up 46% um, to $776,000. Again, um, you know, we've, uh, in, in March, revenue was very close to our December revenue. We were only a couple of percent below that, which is, you know, um, which is significantly higher than what we've seen again in the years before, um, because, again, of, kind of coming out of COVID, um, we see a lot of pent up demand um, and, uh, you know, the people are out there and, and taking the opportunities now, obviously, with, with borders opening, uh, at least nationally, to, um, to get in the holidays. And, um, but the other thing, you know, to mention here is all this is obviously 
you know, great results, but still without any international travel. So you can imagine that international travel is going to um, significantly change that game for us as well. Again, um, we had, um, you know, international travel is normally when go, people go overseas for a longer period of time. So we're not talking, you know, your weekly uh, holiday or, or, or a extended weekend. Most people go for two or three weeks, which uh, means that our booking values um, are um, a, a little bit higher um, if, that, if, if international travel come, will come back again. And so we see that at the moment that, you know, our, our average GMV booking, um, our GMV is sort of the, the price per booking at the moment is about 10% lower than what we've seen pre-COVID. Um, but we're very comfortable that that's going to come back now with um, international travel slowly coming back throughout the year. Um, yeah, so uh, the other um, good news is also we've, we've hired uh, Graham Mason, who's uh, going to join us as the, the CFO, um, effective in June. Um, so we're looking really forward to him joining the company as a very um, uh, experienced executive who's uh, worked on Ace Access, the company before and recently has been uh, running the finance um, for Virgin Active here in Australia. So these, uh, again, just the numbers that I've, um, I've already talked about before. Uh, we, are, we are, again, very, very excited about these numbers, particularly if you think about it in the seasonal um, aspect. And I think this is um, kind of shown quite nicely here on, the, uh, on, the, on these graphs where you can see total GMV, so total dollar amount going through the platform on top per month, and on the bottom, the number of sales that we had per month, so number of bookings, um, as well as the, the number of um, um, subscription um, sales that we had in each month. And um, you can see that traditionally, when you go back into March 19 to December 19, we had about 114% growth from kind of the March months to the December months, and this is kind of very consistent in terms of what we see in terms of seasonality. Um, and it's you know quite quite simple. Um, the March is the first kind of peak in the year, like like I said, with Easter, um, and then you see kind of a, a constant kind of growth with the the um, school holidays in kind of July uh, normally, and uh, the second school holidays in kind of September October, and then obviously into the long uh, um, summer holidays throughout the Christmas period, with December always the strongest uh, strongest months of the year <clears throat> by by quite some margin, and uh, we were very well on track to kind of um, see similar numbers this year. Uh, you obviously see then in 2020 the COVID impact, but the interesting part really is is uh, if you look at the last couple of months, you see that November December we we already saw some some very good recovery uh, out of COVID. But again, March is a um, um, is a is a is a uh, we really overachieved kind of what we what we uh, our targets, uh, and you can see so you can see on the bottom graph as well that the number of bookings um, was even higher than in December, uh, and again the only reason that um, our revenue wasn't higher than in December is we have traditionally always in March uh, lower booking values um, simply due to the fact that people are not going away for as long as they do. Uh, in, in the Christmas period, but what we also see, you know, I think that's a that's a very interesting trend um, to keep an eye on is the the number of daytime services uh, that we're seeing booked at the moment is significantly growing. And again, I think this is a, a result of um, COVID and the tailwinds that we're seeing from COVID. A lot of people would have gotten pets throughout the COVID period. Um, you know, a lot of people would have looked after them while working from home. But now with more and more companies coming back to the office, um, people will have to find a solution for those pets. And um, we are obviously here to help. And um, so what we're seeing a lot is daytime services and, um, and dog walking services particularly are uh, growing significantly quicker than some of the other um, um, uh, services that we're providing, which is, which is great because this is, a, this is one of our focus areas where we um, spend a lot of time on at the moment in improving the product, making sure that the user experience is as easy as possible. And, um, and customers can even um, uh, have a better experience than it is now in making those bookings um, and managing these bookings on a day-to-day -day basis. Cool, so this kind of um, gets me through the update. 
And um, but Jane, maybe maybe uh, we can go back to you for some questions. Yeah, absolutely. There's been a few that have come through, and please feel free to use the chat function at the bottom of the screen if you've got any further ones. Um, so there's just one on service types, and have you seen growth for different service types after COVID? Yeah, so like, like I mentioned before, the, the, the service types of this is something that we're, we're um, looking at, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis pretty much. And, um, you know, traditionally the, the company and how we built the company up, it was very much focused on your um, holiday services, so the longest days. But now um, with coming out of COVID and more and more demand for people in terms of the daytime services, um, this, is a, this is very much a focus for us. Um, from a technology perspective, but also from a marketing perspective, and uh, getting that out to, out to our customers and making sure that our customers have the best possible experience on the platform. Um, yeah, and so, like I said before, the, the, those daytime services are growing significantly quicker at the moment than our, um, than our pet sitting, um, uh, than our traditional pet sitting services, um, in, in relation, obviously, right? They're, they're, they're both growing. But the, the number of um, uh, the percentage ratio of, of daytime services is growing significantly quicker at the moment. And what are some factors you look at for growth in the next quarter? Yeah, so good point. So um, you know, I mean, there's there's a couple of things that come into play here, and I think you know it, what I mentioned, the seasonal uh, effect is kind of on our side. Uh, Q3 of a financial year, so the last quarter. Is traditionally always our weakest quarter um, when we go through the year. So you know, now going towards Christmas, we will see um, just the, the, the seasonal effect of our business uh, and and the pickup there. And I think on top of that, um, important to mention is the the um, the additional kind of uh, growth factors that could come in there just from the COVID um, coming out of COVID. So you know, anything in terms of opening up uh, the New Zealand uh, bubble or the Hong Kong Singapore bubble that, uh, that they are talking about now, all of that's going to help us to kind of pick up the, the, the growth even further than what we've seen so far. And then um, I think aside from the seasonal and the, and the COVID factors, I think what we're going to see over the next um, two or three quarters really is kind of kicking the new revenue streams kicking in. And so we've now, you know, we've now done a, a good job on getting dinner bowl out there. We have the raw food out there. We've got customers on the platform that love the product. Um, we've got a product. We've got a we've got a platform we can we can use to roll out um, additional um, uh, product lines. And that's really what we're focusing on. And I think that's really going to come through uh, over the next couple of quarters. So you know, the impact of kibble, the impact of um, lightly cooked. Um, is going to be significant. 80% of the pet owners feed their, feed their um, pets, uh, their, feed their dogs um, some kind of kibble. So, you know, that's a huge opportunity as far as uh, in terms of growth and um, improving um, on the conversion rates and the, the acquisitions that we're already seeing on the Dinnerball platform. And then um, I think we're also going to, um, once, once we get the new product lined out, we're also going to focus on a couple of additional um, uh, revenue opportunities. There could be, for example, in the, in the toy space. Um, there could also, one thing that we're looking at is treats, for example. Um, you know, treats is a very attractive model for us because um, a subscription, subscription model by itself in treats is probably harder to do, but because we already have customers that are signed up to our subscription boxes, it's very easy for us to add um, treats, for example, to a box. Um, doesn't add anything in terms of um, the, the uh, cost of delivery, um, but we've got very nice margins on, on those products and it uh, just increases the, the profitability of each box that we're sending out. You answered a few questions in that one, but um, another one here. So do you have any plans on expanding your training offerings, for example, enabling service providers to upskill? Yes. So, I mean, training is, is uh, super important for us. Um, you know, I think one thing to mention that probably plays into that as well. One, one thing that we've really learned about the platform and, and kind of how to make the platform work is that it's not so much about the number of sitters that you have on the platform, but really about the, the number of quality sitters that you have on the platform. So, um, you know, we, we're already kind of working a lot on making sure that the sitters on the platform are, you know, well-educated and providing good service. 
but um, we actually um, uh, just in last week working on um, a project where we particularly um, work on content and opportunities to upscale sitters um, uh, in terms of their knowledge about being a sitter and um, about how to use the platform properly and how to get the best out of the platform as well, right? Because for us, you know, one of the one of the key things that we're always working on is making sure that sitters are um, staying on the platform, um, and you know, we want to reduce leakage as much as we can. Um, so what I mean with leakage is um, simply customer comes onto the platform, finds a sitter. We obviously want to make sure that they make the same that their next booking um, on the platform as well, and they're not taking it off the platform and cut it out as, a, as uh, from the from the return revenue. And you know we're doing a good job of that already because we've got over 60 um, to 63 percent of repeat customers now on the platform um, of in, in any given month. But um, the the opportunity there, particularly in the kind of daytime services, um, dog walking, and so forth, is uh, is getting more and more sophisticated in how we use the data because we can really see in the data on on how good a customer is. Uh, sorry, how good a sitter is, because um, you can imagine we can we can see that uh, you know a sitter has great conversion rates on first time conver on conversions, but he might be lacking or or having having subpar conversion rates on um, second time and repeat bookings, and you know we make sure that um, we communicate that to the sitters. Um, we we tell them you know on how how they make sure they're still getting getting listed on top of the uh, search results. And, um, and that's something we're focusing on now, uh, where we, we believe uh, it's going to have a huge impact on the, on the, on the top line of the company. This is just another one that's come through. So how do you approach gaining service offerings in regional areas? Yeah, so a very good point. And so regional areas are traditionally not our um, strong suit in terms of um, uh, the, the, the marketplace. Uh, as you can imagine, a lot of people have, you know, huge, huge houses, farms um, in, in kind of regional areas. We absolutely offer our service in those areas. Um, but if you if you look at kind of where our sweet spots are, uh, they're absolutely in the metro kind of um, high density areas. So um, I think for us, particularly, we've got an opportunity with our subscription services in those areas. So, you know, um, people still want to feed their, feed their pets with quality food. Um, they still need kind of health products for their, for their pets and so forth. So that is definitely something that we are pushing out, not just in Metro, but also in, in the regional areas. And I think that it's a huge opportunity in that space. So, you know, having said that, obviously, um, we're not, it's not like we're not offering our marketplace service in those areas. It's just that it's from a, from a, from a business perspective, um, you know, the, the, the majority of business is happening in, in the Metro areas. Okay, we've got time for one more. So how do you guys anticipate growing revenue quick enough for the market to acknowledge that shares are cheap? So is it through acquisitions and through marketing? What, what's your thoughts? Yeah, so I mean, if you, if, you look at, um, if you look at our valuation at the moment, you know, we, we, we're very much on track to kind of um, uh, get, get to a GMV number that makes us actually quite cheap. Um, you know, if you look at the, tra the trajectory that we're seeing now, um, through through to Christmas, uh, just on the on the core business, I think um, you know you, you, you see other businesses like Airtasker, uh, you see um, um, other marketplace businesses here in Australia and the US. Normally, kind of the multiples you see is kind of two to two and a half times at least in terms of GMV, and so um, and that's normally on forward GMV for the next year. So you know, looking at that, I think we're in a in a very good space. And um, in particular, then looking at the opportunities that we have in terms of additional revenue coming through from the subscription services. And, um, you know, those, one, those revenues are going to be much more substantial in the next financial year um, with the additional product lines and service lines that we're going to add. Um, I think that's, that's really going to get us into that space where, where uh, investors are going to acknowledge that the growth is there and um, that we're executing on the, on the strategy that we've set. Um, at the time of the IPO. There's actually a few more that have popped up if you've got time, but sure. um, we've just been named the Marley Spoon for pets. Can yeah. we give a bit of an update on the dog food delivery? Yeah, so um, it's a it very similar model, obviously. Um, you know, Rolf, Rolf, who runs Marley Spoon in Australia, is, uh, is you know, uh, one, is, is an investor in our business as well. 
Um, so we've, we've got a lot of knowledge about that business um, and, um, and we obviously know kind of how to get this business right. Uh, I think what COVID has done really is, is familiarize people much more with kind of subscription services than they were pre-COVID. So again, kind of from a, from a COVID impact, I think we're, in a, we're in, a, in a space where we're going to see much more subscription services popping up, not just for us humans, but um, also for, for our beloved um, uh, um, dogs and pets. And uh, that's really the opportunity that we see there, right? And so for us, um, it's not just limited to food, but we see really the opportunity to use the platform that we've built to um, venture into the different revenue streams that I mentioned. So, you know, food, yes, different food offerings, absolutely. But, um, you know, um, health, so we're talking uh, tick and flea treatments, uh, you know, it's one of those things that our customers constantly tell us, yep, that's a, it's a, it, I have to go to the shop. I have to remember every X months to go to the shop, buy them um, and, and, um, and give it to my pet where, you know, we can obviously provide that in a really nice fashion with a subscription service and um, takes out, you know, all the hassle for the customer. And, and we use the same tech platform for that. And it's just uh, putting up, putting up another um, uh, product, product on the platform. There's been a few questions that have come through just about international expansion. I know you probably can't say too much, but is it is it on the horizon? Yeah, so uh, we, we were always super focused on making sure that we're number one marketplace in Australia. I think that's, you know, if you are a marketplace and you want to play in this, ga in this game, uh, there's very little value in kind of being the number two or three. Um, you want to make sure that you are the number one. And so that has always been our focus, and I think will be our focus um, going forward as well. That we we keep that position here, and and you know everything, all the numbers at the moment are very much kind of um, in line with that. Um, if we look at our competitors, we we think we we're about two 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 and a half times bigger than the next um, next competitor, um, and then get that gap where we obviously want to grow. Um, but then the 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 closest. Um, uh, um, you know, the closest neighbors that we have and the easiest market for us to, to go into would be New Zealand. Um, so that's definitely a market um, that we kind of look into. Um, and then I think there's, there's absolutely an opportunity to look at um, some Asian markets. Um, but, you know, this, this won't be happening in the next 12 months. Um, but it's something that we kind of keep an eye on. Um, pet ownership is changing quite a lot in those markets. Uh, and the relationship to pets is uh, changing a lot. So, so we think in those markets there's a huge opportunity over the next couple of years um, to provide, you know, some of the services that we that we established here in Australia. Um, there's quite a few. So, are there any other strategies to recruit owners to the platform other than pet sitting and walking? Um, yes, absolutely. So, um, you know, we've we've always said that the the opportunity for us as a company, um, you know, is really to look at kind of those, we've got kind of those three pillar strategy, right? So one is marketplace and we know how that works. We know, um, we know how to, to, to uh, acquire customers. The next one is subscription services and I've talked about this, but the third one really for us is, um, is pet on experiences. And so we've got a, we've got a small team in the, in the, uh, in the office now that kind of looks at that particular space. And what we're trying to identify there is kind of what are the hooks for us to get people into our ecosystem. And, um, you know, think about this from um, a life, pet lifetime perspective. We want to make sure that we um, offer services or products for, um, that are useful for pet owners from start to finish. And so that could start from, uh, you know, the, the, the time that you start looking for a pet. Um, we've got already a lot of uh, content around pet ownership, um, you know, breeds, uh, who's the right breed for the right, uh, for, for which owner. Um, and we want to use that and really kind of build products around that to make sure that uh, people make the right decision. The next one then would be uh, the breeding space. I think there's a huge opportunity in the breeding space um, to make sure to, to give customers a much better experience that they have now, because at the moment it's, it's basically word of mouth and gum tree and, and Googling. Um, so that there's definitely an opportunity there to do something. Um, and, you know, whether that is then that we build it or we buy it, um, we'll have to make that decision, but we definitely want to play in that space. This is just a question on Qantas. So are Qantas going to be promoting the Madpole service via their platform? Yes, absolutely. Um, so, you know, we still have a great relationship with Qantas. We just had um, 
we just had our kind of yearly kickoff um, for the strategy going up and and uh, you know I've, I've just been on the plane um, from from Sydney to Melbourne on a Qantas flight so it was nice to to actually be on a plane again so you know travel is obviously picking up again um, if so you know national mainly at the moment but um, uh, Qantas is very keen to also help us with the expansion um, and um, uh, we're working on a couple of things with them kind of going forward in the next year where they're going to help us to um, promote the, the product further to their customer base. And what time for one more. So how significant are the costs associated with these new product lines relative to the core product? There seems to be a much higher cost associated with pet food products. Yeah, so um, I mean, uh, there's there's obviously always a cost in kind of starting a new product line and um, and uh, and getting that up and running. Uh, you know, throughout throughout my whole life and, and kind of pretty much everyone in the company, uh, we're, we're all entrepreneurs by heart. And we kind of follow the the test and learn strategies. Um, the whole company is set up very agile, um, so we're going to make decisions very quickly on product lines and whether they work or not. Uh, and whether we found the right thing or not. And we also we won't be shy on, on cutting something if it doesn't work. But um, the way we kind of run the whole business is we're always trying to get to the point where we can acquire customers at about a third of the cost of the lifetime value of those customers. So, you know, that's kind of our mantra and kind of how we, how we run the business. And um, uh, in terms of, you know, um, the, the cost, yes, absolutely, our spend will go up a little bit and our burn will go up um, over, over the next quarters compared to, you know, the, the time before. But uh, we've got $16.5 million in the bank now. We obviously want to make sure that we use that um, uh, to, to grow the business and grow the business quickly. Um, you know, it, it'll give us at least 24 months in terms of run way um, uh, and, and kind of really execute on the strategy that we have. And I think then we're going to be at a point where the company is at a size where we can then make a call on whether it makes sure to it makes sense to push even harder on the on the growth uh, side of things, or whether we want to turn it around and um, get the company more into uh, profitable waters, which at that size is going to be quite easy for us to do. You know, we could have we could run that marketplace at the moment profitable if we want, but um, you know, obviously there's a huge opportunity in terms of market. Um, Brad out there, and um, I think we're very well positioned to kind of take uh, take advantage of that. Okay, well, I think we've covered everything there. Um, thank you all for joining us today for the Mad Pause Holdings Q3 FY21 Investor Webinar. A recording of today's presentation will be available on our website, and we look forward to speaking with you, with you again in the near future. Thank you. Thank you.